These are 25 things you didn't know about Eminem, and they're going to blow your mind so much you're going to need a revival. Starting off at the top is the only time Eminem has ever apologized in his life. Eminem hasn't apologized to anyone except this person, and it was Tyler, the creator. But what started their incredibly controversial beef? In 2014, Tyler tweeted that Eminem's album Shady 15 was bad. In an interview, Eminem was asked about Tyler's comments, and he was like, what the F? He said he was confused because in the past he invited Tyler on tour with him, and they hung out and made jokes. But Tyler wasn't done roasting Eminem. In 2015, he said, if you still follow Eminem, you drink too much Mountain Dew. Dang. Tyler was really firing shots at the gamer kids who listened to Eminem. But many fans thought Tyler was speaking the truth, and Eminem had lost his roots. But this last tweet Tyler wrote made Eminem go insane. He listened to Eminem's single Walk on Water and tweeted, Dear God, this song is horrible. Eminem knew he had to bounce back, so he dropped Kamikaze and called out Tyler by name. But Eminem went too far when he said this next thing. He dissed Tyler in the song Fall and directed a terrible word at him. Eminem said the word that he called Tyler was definitely too far. Eminem realized that he was hurting a lot more people than just Tyler. But if you think Eminem was out of line in his beef with Tyler, listen to the time he called Kendrick Lamar a fake rapper. Eminem heard Kendrick was the best lyricist in hip-hop, so he invited him to the studio to get on a song. Kendrick came in with his crew and they got to work. Kendrick recorded a hook for the song and Eminem liked it. But Kendrick said he had to leave, and just as he was headed out the door, Eminem said this. He asked Kendrick to write another verse, but only under one condition. Kendrick said, all right, what's that? Eminem said your entire crew has to leave the studio, so it's just you and me. Kendrick was confused, but said okay, and had his crew wait outside in the cold. Kendrick wrote a sick verse and rapped it for Eminem Live. But why did Eminem make Kendrick's friends wait outside? Eminem was suspicious Kendrick had a ghostwriter and didn't write his own raps. He thought Kendrick was too good to actually be legit. But after Eminem got him alone, Kendrick spit bars and Eminem realized Kendrick was the real deal. But nothing's crazier than the story of how Eminem met Dr. Dre. In 1997, Eminem released the Slim Shady EP, but it didn't perform as well as he would have hoped. Eminem kept grinding and got a shot to perform at the Rap Olympics in L.A., but Eminem got evicted the night before the competition, so he broke into his own house and slept on the floor before catching his flight to L.A. But little did Eminem know, a teenager in the crowd at the Rap Olympics would change his life. An Interscope Records intern saw Eminem perform in L.A. and couldn't believe his bars. Eminem gave him a demo tape after the show, and the intern barged into Interscope executive Jimmy Ivine's office the next day. He couldn't stop rambling about the white kid from Detroit who destroyed everyone at the competition. Jimmy trusted the kid and said he'd have Dr. Dre check out the demo, but no one could have expected what happened next. Jimmy played Dr. Dre the Eminem tape, but Dre couldn't believe his ears. He had never heard a demo as unique as Eminem's and told Jimmy to have Eminem in L.A. by Monday. But when Eminem showed up to Dre's studio, he was so nervous he couldn't look Dre in the eyes. But it was his crazy outfit that stole the show. Eminem wore a bright yellow sweatsuit, and Dre couldn't believe this Detroit kid's style. He looked like Winnie the Pooh up in Dre's studio. But what happened next made Dre know Eminem was legit. They went into Dre's studio and made four songs in six hours, including Role Model and My Name Is. But Dre couldn't secure Eminem a record deal, so he flew back to Detroit and was evicted from his house. Eminem knew nothing would probably come of his trip to L.A., but Dre wouldn't stop hounding Interscope Records to sign Eminem. Every executive told Dre Eminem was too controversial, but Dre said he was all in and they had to sign him. Interscope finally gave in and signed the blue-eyed rapper from Detroit. In 1999, Eminem released the Slim Shady LP and became a millionaire. But before Eminem was a millionaire, he was dirt poor and lived in a trailer park in Detroit. He grinded working odd jobs like as a factory worker stamping auto parts. But Eminem's most notable job was being a dishwasher and cook at Gilbert's Lodge in Detroit. Imagine eating a burger and not knowing the real Slim Shady made it for you. Now that's messed up. Eminem worked 60 hours a week and made $5.50 an hour, which added up to $330 a week. Dang, 
Eminem really started from nothing because now he makes over $600,000 a week. Eminem got fired from Gilbert's five days before Haley's birthday with 40 bucks to his name. He went home and wrote the song Rock Bottom that night. But Eminem did it all for Haley and worked overtime just so she had more opportunities than he did. But Eminem's hard work paid off because when he wasn't scrubbing spaghetti sauce off plates, he was writing bars. By the time Eminem turned 27 years old, he debuted his first studio album, The Slim Shady LP, and sold 5 million copies. But Eminem hated spending money. One day he was at the Rolex store with his friends, and they pressured him to buy a new watch. But Eminem told them he didn't have enough money. But surely a multi-million dollar recording artist like himself could afford a $20,000 watch, right? But Eminem didn't think so. He thought he couldn't afford the watch, so he called his manager to ask if it was okay. Eminem's manager assured him he could buy the watch and he wouldn't go broke. But guess what happened to the Rolex he bought? Eminem never wore it and kept it in a locked box in his closet with his skeletons. He's afraid of scratching it, so he wears a $100 G-Shock everywhere he goes. But Eminem almost went broke again, and that's the sixth fact you didn't know about him. Eminem began using drugs on the set of 8 Mile in 2002. He worked 16-hour days on set and had only a small window to sleep. One day, someone on the crew gave him an Ambien, and it knocked him out. Slowly, Eminem became addicted and started using Vicodin, Valium, and Methadone. Eminem once took so much Methadone that he was two hours away from dying. But it got worse. In 2003, Eminem got off probation for his felonies and didn't have to submit urine samples anymore. He started using drugs a lot, and by 2005, when he went on his Anger Management 3 tour, he was high every night. This led to an eventual overdose in 2007, but Eminem kept using drugs. Eminem said the drugs made holes in his stomach, so he was constantly eating. He weighed 230 pounds and had to find a way to beat his addiction, or his life was over. Eminem knew he needed help, but he couldn't call just anyone to get him sober. Eminem called a massive musician who had gotten sober themselves. This artist knew the pain and suffering Eminem was going through, but you won't believe who it was. Eminem called Elton John, and Elton became his sponsor. For 18 months, Elton helped Eminem kick Vicodin, Valium, and Methadone out of his life. Elton was sober for 30 years and checked in on Eminem weekly. They became insanely close and he saved Eminem's life. In 2008, Eminem checked himself into rehab and started running to lose weight. Eminem ran 17 miles a day on a treadmill like a maniac. Eminem's experience on the 8-mile set never made him want to do another movie. But when Eminem did a Q&A about the film, one question stood out above the rest. A female asked Eminem a question, and what Eminem responded with was insane. The fan asked Eminem if he would ever make another movie again. But Eminem thought the fan was attractive, so he tried to spit some game instead of answering her question. But Eminem had some weak riz, and he said, I don't know, I just want to make out with you. The fan was shocked at Eminem's unexpected answer, and she didn't know what to say. But Eminem finally answered her question and said, I would like to make more films, but not one where I'm in every scene. Maybe a comedy, but yes, I still would like to make out with you. All right, calm down there, Slim Shady. Now that may not have been the most romantic flirting you've ever heard, but when Eminem isn't trying to get a date, he's doing something no one else in the world can do. See into the future. That's right. The ninth fact is how Eminem predicted the future with his song, Stan. In the song, Eminem rapped about a man named Stan who's obsessed with him. But Stan's six-year-old little brother Matthew was an even bigger Eminem fan. They waited outside Eminem's concert in the cold for four hours hoping to see him. But when Eminem finally came outside to get in his limo, he ignored them. But Stan was so obsessed with Eminem that not meeting him made him drive his car off a bridge. This led his brother Matthew to grow up hating Eminem. But what happened next was truly haunting and proved Eminem predicted the future. In 2013, Eminem released the song Bad Guy, which was about Matthew talking to Eminem. In the song, Matthew talks about breaking into Eminem's house so he can get revenge for Stan. But what happened next made fans think Eminem was a future-telling prophet. In 2021, Eminem's house was actually broken into in real life, and you won't believe who did it. The intruder smashed Eminem's windows with a brick and climbed inside. 
but fans couldn't believe the burglar's name because it was the same as the fictional character from his music. The robber's name was Matthew. How crazy is that? The robber got arrested and put in jail, just like Eminem when he was 20 years old. But you won't believe what Slim Shady did to get arrested. Eminem was involved in a drive-by shooting, but it didn't involve real guns. Instead, Eminem and his friends drove around Detroit shooting random people with a paintball gun. Eminem drove his car while his friends shot at people walking down the sidewalk. But when they handed the gun to Eminem, he shot at something else. Eminem had his friend take the wheel and he climbed out of his window onto the roof of his car. But Eminem made a decision that he would later regret. He aimed the gun and shot at a cop car. Eminem recreated the incident in a scene in 8 Mile, but everyone in the movie got away scotch-free. However, in real life, Eminem wasn't so lucky. He got pulled over, and the cop threw him in jail. But the cop never showed up to court, so Eminem's case was dismissed. Eminem got let go scotch-free, but if anyone disses Eminem, you know they're going to pay the price. The eleventh crazy fact you didn't know about Eminem is insane beef with none other than Snoop Dogg himself. In 2020, Snoop roasted Eminem so hard, Eminem wanted to lock him in his basement. But you won't believe why. Snoop went on the Breakfast Club radio show and what he said about Eminem was astonishing. He said Eminem wasn't successful because of his talent, but because he was a white rapper. But what Snoop said next was even crazier. He was adamant Dr. Dre made Eminem famous, and Eminem wouldn't have made it in hip-hop without him. But Dr. Dre didn't produce all of Eminem's albums, so he was confused why Snoop was spreading fake rumors about him. But Snoop wasn't finished roasting Eminem. Snoop said Eminem wasn't in his top 10 rappers of all time, and he could live without Eminem's music. Eminem vented about it in his song Zeus, and what he said made his fans throw Snoop Dogg's albums in the trash. Eminem rapped the verse, Last thing I need is Snoop dogging me. Man, dog, you was like a god to me. Man, not really. I had dog backwards. But Snoop responded and said he wouldn't fuel the beef anymore because Eminem was soft. But fans discovered why Snoop hated Eminem to begin with. In 2000, Snoop wanted to feature on the Marshall Mathers LP, but Eminem said no. But Snoop Dogg isn't the only person Eminem said no to. How about the time he gave the middle finger to the Grammys? Eminem hates the Grammys because every time he was nominated for Album of the Year, he was forced to attend and lost to someone he never heard of. Eminem has 15 Grammys, but said he sold his soul to win them. Eminem's most controversial Grammy loss occurred in 2000 when the Marshall Mathers LP lost to Steely Dan. But now Eminem has a different mindset and it's crazy. He said winning Album of the Year isn't a big deal anymore. In 2017, Eminem watched the Grammys from home and witnessed Kendrick and Jay-Z lose when they should have won. Eminem said, don't ever ask me to go to the Grammys again. My answer is no for a hundred million times. I'm never going. There's one thing Eminem would never miss, though, and he had to become invisible to witness it. Eminem's daughter, Haley, was nominated for Homecoming Queen and was willing to do anything to see it. But Eminem so famous he knew he couldn't sit in the bleachers like the other parents. He had to come up with a solution and ended up planning a scheme out of a Mission Impossible movie. Eminem called Haley's principal and told him his plan. At first, the principal thought it was a prank call, but he quickly realized he was talking to the real Slim Shady. Eminem asked if he could sit in a classroom and watch the ceremony from there. The principal told Eminem yes and arranged a room close to the football field. But no one could have expected what happened on homecoming night. Eminem took a black SUV to the high school and snuck into the school's science lab through a back door. But when Haley walked on the field with her mom, Eminem opened the classroom door and peeked outside. Haley was crowned homecoming queen, and Eminem yelled, That's my daughter! Everyone in the crowd couldn't believe Eminem had secretly been at the game the whole time, but being invisible at football games isn't Eminem's only secret. He secretly ghostwrites for artists, and the list is insane. Eminem wrote for his friend Dr. Dre and picked up a Grammy for Forgot About Dre. But Eminem didn't stop writing hit rap songs and wrote Jay-Z's song Renegade for the Blueprint album. But he was also a part of the hip-hop group D12 and wrote for his bandmate Bizarre. Eminem wrote Bizarre's single Rockstar and even cameoed in the music video. But Eminem kept writing and this next artist is even crazier. 
Eminem wrote 50 Cent's song, My Life, which featured Eminem himself and Adam Levine. Now there's one Eminem secret that far outweighs the rest, and it will absolutely blow your mind. Eminem has a secret sister. A woman from San Diego, California named Sarah claimed she was Eminem's sister. But was the woman actually his sister? Eminem's father, Marshall, left Eminem's mother, Debbie, shortly after Eminem was born. His father moved to California and had two more children with a different woman. But could Sarah from California be one of those kids and actually be related to Eminem? Sarah was 31 years old when she was at a family barbecue and Eminem's music video came on the TV. Sarah thought Eminem looked a lot like her but laughed it off. There was no way she was actually siblings with Slim Shady, right? But Sarah's dad had his suspicions. He had forgotten his son's name and wondered if the boy on television was actually his son. He called his aunt who looked after his baby boy when he ran off to California and what she said changed his life. The aunt said his son's name was Marshall Mathers, so Sarah was right all along. Eminem really was her brother. Sarah tried to get in touch with Eminem immediately, but it was hard to reach him because he was so famous. Sarah and her dad bought tickets to Eminem's concert in California and tried to get backstage to meet him. They found Eminem's security and told them they were his long-lost family. But Eminem's dad and Sarah got a rude awakening. Eminem told his security to kick them out immediately. Eminem refused to meet his dad and half-sister because he didn't want anything to do with them. But family trouble is nothing new for Eminem, but nothing compares to the time he dissed his mom so hard she sued him. Coming in at number 16 is Eminem's troubled relationship with his mother Debbie. In 1999, Eminem released My Name Is and rapped about his mother's drug addiction when he was a kid. Eminem's mom denied the claims and said Eminem was a spoiled child growing up. Later that year, Debbie sued Eminem for defamation. She said his lyrics caused her a lot of pain and she wanted $10 million. But after Debbie filed the lawsuit, her life got even worse. She became the most hated woman in Detroit. People attacked her at the grocery store and sent her threatening mail. But when Eminem learned about the lawsuit, he just used it as inspiration for new raps. But it gets even crazier because Eminem's mother dropped her own diss track about Eminem's betrayal. Mom's dropping diss tracks? Talk about a quick way to lose your street cred. I definitely wouldn't have wanted to be with Eminem when that dropped. Eminem's mother reduced the lawsuit to $2 million, but Eminem still rejected it. But you won't believe how much the lawsuit settled for. Eminem paid his mother $25,000, but she took home only $1,000 after legal fees. You could say Eminem won the battle against his mother. But the feud he had with the game is the craziest beef in history. The game disrespected Eminem's daughter because Dr. Dre didn't ask him to perform at the Super Bowl. But what made him angrier was Eminem's emergence from the Compton Courthouse during his performance. The game said Eminem stepped on the Compton Courthouse and it broke. He told Eminem you would not know unless your mother was in a Compton Courthouse fighting for custody of you or you saw your friends get sentenced to life there. But the game could never take back what he said next. He screamed, I used to think Eminem was better than me, but he's not. But the game took it a step further. He dropped a 10-minute diss track on Eminem and said, Dear Slim, Haley is with me and she's unharmed for now. The game had someone reenact Haley's voice on the track and they said, Daddy, I'm really scared. But the most shocking part about all of this is that Eminem did the most uncharacteristic thing ever and didn't respond to the game. That's because nobody gets to use Haley's voice in their songs except Eminem. One time, Eminem told Kim he was taking Haley to Chuck E. Cheese for the afternoon. But in reality, he took her to the studio. Eminem wrote the song 97 Bonnie and Clyde and needed Haley to record her parts. The song was about Eminem taking Haley to the beach to bury Kim's body. Eminem recorded Haley making baby noises into a microphone and added it to the track before returning her back home. But when Kim found out Eminem used Haley's voice in a song about burying her, she flipped out, but Eminem said he only wrote the song to get back at Kim and now it doesn't mean anything to him. But no one got violated like when Eminem fought Spider-Man. Eminem grew up obsessed with comic books, but now he's an actual comic book character. Eminem has made several Marvel comic appearances as himself, but it gets even crazier. In 2009, Eminem appeared in the Punisher comic book and the plot was unreal. In the story, the Punisher beat up Eminem outside a concert venue in Detroit. 
But it was a misunderstanding, and Eminem teamed up with the Punisher to fight Barracuda. Eminem even chopped up Barracuda with a chainsaw. I bet Eminem wished he could have done Hat when the game rapped about Haley, but in 2022, Marvel put Eminem on a variant cover of The Amazing Spider-Man No. 1. On the cover, Eminem challenged Spider-Man to a rap battle on stage while Luke Cage, Daredevil, and Miles Morales watched in the crowd. But Eminem didn't actually battle Spider-Man in the storyline, and it was just a limited edition cover. I guess one can only imagine how Eminem would tear Peter Parker alive in actual battle. His webs are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his Spidey suit already. Auntie May's spaghetti. Okay, we'll leave the rapping to Eminem. But the iconic Lose Yourself verse has taken on a life of its own. In 2017, Eminem opened a mom's spaghetti pop-up shop in Detroit. Fans could buy delicious Italian meals like spaghetti, meatballs, and spaghetti sandwiches. Eminem even hit the drive through window to serve fans their spaghetti and take pictures. But it all changed in 2021 when Eminem took Mom's Spaghetti a step further. He opened a brick-and-mortar Mom's Spaghetti restaurant downtown Detroit. Now Detroit can eat Eminem's famous spaghetti whenever they want. But Eminem keeps Lose Yourself close to his heart and doesn't let anyone steal it. It showed when the New Zealand National Party used an exact copy of Lose Yourself in an ad campaign without Eminem's approval. Eminem was furious and sued them. But Eminem didn't keep all the money to himself. He's the most charitable man alive, and in 2017, after earning $415,000 from the lawsuit, Eminem donated most of it to hurricane relief funds in Puerto Rico and Houston, Texas. But no one learned their lesson more than Ja Rule, and it's the 19th fact on the list. Ja Rule had a heated beef with 50 Cent, and he knew 50 and Eminem were best friends. Ja made the regrettable decision to call out Eminem on his track Loose Change. Ja said, M, you claim your mom is an addict, so what's Haley going to be when she grows up? This struck a chord with Eminem because no one disses his family, especially someone who once said that look in your eyes is like a sunrise. Eminem released Haley's Revenge remixing Tupac's song Hail Mary, but the lyrics were brutal. Eminem calls over Haley in the song and tells her to bring him his Oscar so they can shove it up Ja Rule's yeah, you get the point. But by 2004, Eminem was tired of roasting Ja Rule and said the war was over. Ja Rule's career and album sales never recovered after his beef with Eminem. But you know who else didn't recover? The magazine that tried to take down Eminem. The Source was the most popular hip-hop magazine in America. Famous for their hip-hop album reviews rated on a 1-5 to five microphone scale, rappers like Eminem hated when The Source gave them poor reviews. The source gave the Marshall Mathers LP and the Eminem show only four mics, and Eminem was pissed. One of the source's co-owners, Ray Benzino, said Eminem was overrated because he was white. But Eminem disagreed, saying the source shouldn't care about his race and his albums deserved five mics. Eminem's fans turned on the magazine and his label pulled their advertising from them. But a few months later, the source lost a lawsuit to a former editor for $15 million. Because Eminem ruined their reputation and the lawsuit took all their money, the source filed for bankruptcy and stopped being the main voice of hip-hop. Looks like Eminem got his way after all. But you might have wondered, why does Eminem always wear a hoodie? Eminem is never caught in public without a hat and a hoodie, and it's for a specific reason. Fans were worried something was wrong with Eminem because for the past decade, he always had a hoodie on wherever he went. Fans said Eminem's hoodies are a part of his style and he likes to be comfortable when he performs. Eminem never wears name brand hoodies, and they're always black or gray. Fans said Eminem grew up wearing baggy clothes like hoodies, and it helps him stay true to his roots. But the main reason Eminem wears hoodies is to cover his face so he doesn't get recognized in public. But other fans weren't as convinced. They said Eminem was cloned, and the real Eminem was gone. He was wearing a hoodie so people wouldn't notice he wasn't the real Eminem. But of course, these are rumors, and Eminem wears hoodies to fall under the radar. But what's Eminem going to be doing in 20 years? In 2002, Eminem said in 20 years he wanted to be in an old folks home with Mariah Carey. Eminem also wanted to still be producing music, but if he was still rapping, he said someone should slap him off the main stage. Eminem's still rapping at 50 years old, but he's definitely not living with Mariah, and that's because he ruined his chances with her. 
Eminem said Mariah and him dated for six months, but Mariah said Eminem was a stalker. Mariah even made a song called Obsessed With Me, which talked about Eminem's obsession with her. But Eminem responded, and it was insane. Eminem dissed Mariah and Nick Cannon on the track Bagpipes from Baghdad. He said he was going to kick Nick in his junk and cut him up like Jeffrey Dahmer. But Eminem wasn't done yet. He wrote another diss track called The Warning, and it was even more out of line. He said Mariah and him got frisky in her bed, but he showed up to the party a little too early. But Eminem had more to say. He called Mariah an alcoholic, and that's why she was lying. But Nick Cannon had heard enough from Eminem and told him to stop. Nick flew all the way to Detroit to find him and walked around eight mile ready to throw hands. But Nick realized Eminem doesn't live there anymore and never found him. Eminem heard what Nick did and laughed and told him to get back to hosting talent shows. However, one thing Eminem definitely loved more than bothering Mariah was Super Mario Brothers. Well, Donkey Kong, to be exact. Eminem is a video game fiend, and on December 3rd, 2009, he shocked the entire world with his Donkey Kong arcade high score. He was well above the world average score, but a year later, he dropped that his score had increased again. Eminem's 465,800 score put him close to the top 30 players of all time. But since then, the record has been broken multiple times. We all know Eminem's no stranger to competition, and losing in Donkey Kong probably bothered him for weeks on end. But nothing compared to the time an extra on the 8 Mile set cooked Eminem so hard that Eminem fired him. Eminem often mimed his lyrics for the rap battle scenes in the movie to save his voice. But when an actor rapped against Eminem in a scene and got a positive response from the extras in the crowd, Eminem was furious. No one beats him in a rap battle, especially on his own movie set. Eminem told the sound guy to turn his microphone up and make sure the cameras were rolling. They weren't going to want to miss this one. Eminem freestyled off the script and cooked the actor so hard he almost quit. There's probably never going to be another rapper like Eminem. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of things Eminem doesn't tell people about. But if you don't know those things about him, I guarantee there's things you didn't know about Taylor Swift. She caused an actual earthquake in Seattle. She's directing a blockbuster movie with Selena Gomez. She's going to become president of the United States. There's plenty you didn't know, so watch the video on this channel and subscribe.